Falcon Heavy suffered an unexpected crash due to radiation issues with its payload. This unfortunate development was a disappointment to the space community, especially since there were no Falcon Heavy launches for the rest of the year. Fortunately, history has taken a positive turn. NASA has just announced a new launch schedule for Falcon Heavy, which is now scheduled to carry out one of the agency's flagship missions. But why is Falcon Heavy so important to this mission? And why has it always been NASA's first choice for large-scale launches? Let's talk about it in this episode of NR Studio. Falcon Heavy is a rare and heavy spacecraft developed by SpaceX that is designed to meet the demands of launching large and heavy payloads into space. So while Falcon Heavy launches are far fewer than Falcon 9s, with just 10 representing just 2% of the Falcon 9 total, every Falcon Heavy mission is incredibly important. Each Falcon Heavy launch supports large-scale U.S. military operations and very expensive government missions. In 2019, just one year after its first launch, Falcon Heavy has been awarded five commercial contracts worth between $500 million and $750 million, covering the cost of developing the rocket and several options. Except for the first flight in 2018, all other missions were purchased at prices ranging from $160 million to $300 million, depending on the complexity and payload of the mission. Falcon Heavy's unique structure consists of three Falcon 9 boosters connected to a format first stage, allowing it to lift a payload of 53,000 kilograms into orbit, nearly twice that of its closest competitor, the Boeing Delta IV Heavy. In addition to its impressive performance, Falcon Heavy has wowed audiences with its stunning, synchronized landings of two or three boosters. What sets Falcon Heavy apart in the space community is its flawless trajectory. Its missions have never failed, a factor that is becoming increasingly important to contractors in the rocket market. Building on this achievement, and especially to enhance its reputation, Falcon Heavy is preparing to launch another mission carrying NASA's $5.2 billion Europa Clipper payload. If all goes according to plan, the launch is scheduled for October 10th, marking Falcon Heavy's second mission of the year and its 11th overall. Before we dive into the details of this mission, we need to make one thing clear. Europa Clipper was not originally planned for SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. A few years ago, the Senate bill funding NASA's Europa Clipper mission called for the use of the SLS for launch. However, around 2021, a combination of factors prompted the agency to reverse its decision. One of the main reasons was the realization that switching to Falcon Heavy would save a lot of money. At the time, the director of the White House Budget Office said the estimated cost of an SLS launch would exceed $2 billion once development was complete. By choosing a commercial launcher, NASA could save more than a billion and a half dollars. And this was after NASA's Inspector General emphasized the need for flexibility in launcher selection. Pressure from the administration and NASA leadership for this flexibility paid off when SpaceX was ultimately selected to launch Europa Clipper. The cost of launching the spacecraft aboard the Falcon Heavy was just $178 million, a staggering $2 billion compared to the $1.5 billion estimated for an SLS launch. In addition to these cost savings, there were concerns about the availability of the SLS, with delays having delayed its preparation, making it uncertain whether the rocket could launch this year. While the SLS could have allowed for an earlier launch, perhaps a year and a half earlier, that advantage was negated by the delays. Additionally, NASA believes that one of the SLS prime contractors is running out of power and having difficulty building the other critical SLS stage in time for launch. As a result, the agency has decided to focus SLS resources on lunar missions and human exploration rather than Europa. If cost and preparation are not enough, there are also technical constraints on how well SLS will perform on the mission. The rocket's solid boosters, or SRBs, create vibrations that could damage Europa Clipper's payload. Redesigning the spacecraft to withstand these vibrations is estimated to cost $1 billion. As a result, switching to the Falcon Heavy rocket not only saved about $3 billion in total, but also avoided costly redesigns and mission risks. So what exactly will happen during the Europa Clipper mission? After the Falcon Heavy rocket was successfully loaded into the correct orbit, the spacecraft, which will head to Jupiter to study the Galilean moon Europa, 
just passed a crucial technical review called Critical Decision Point E, clearing the way for its launch. Scientists believe that Jupiter's icy moon Europa has conditions suitable beneath its surface to support life, NASA Science Mission Director and Associate Administrator Nicola Fox said on September. 10. These ingredients are water, energy, and chemistry. Studying them by flying close to the moon and above the plumes that emerge from it will help us better understand astrobiology and the potential for habitable worlds beyond our planet Earth. The spacecraft, developed by NASA in partnership with the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, will take about five and a half years to travel the 628 million kilometers, 380 million miles, that separate it from Europa. Once there, it will spend about four years studying the moon and conducting scientific experiments nearly 15 miles, 25 kilometers, from the surface. Space is not for the faint of heart, and it is even more ambitious because the spacecraft, the largest NASA has ever built for planetary exploration, will travel in the extremely harsh radiation environment around Jupiter, Fox said. The launch delay represents an abrupt turnaround for the mission, which until May had been plagued by technical problems. Most notably when engineers realized that the clipper transistors, which control the flow of electricity to the spacecraft, could fail at lower radiation levels than initially thought. But after a series of recent, extensive tests and analyses, NASA determined that the spacecraft systems should be able to meet its goals. We concluded after all of this testing that during our orbit around Jupiter, even though Europa Clipper is immersed in a radiation environment, once it emerges, it emerges enough to give these transistors a chance to partially recover and recover between flights, said Jordan Evans, Europa Clipper project manager. NASA is sealing Europa Clipper's payload and other electronic components in a thick-walled titanium and aluminum vault that acts as a radiation shield against most high-energy atomic particles and will slow the degradation of the spacecraft's systems. This is a tactic studied and used by NASA's Juno mission to Jupiter. The primary goal of the Europa Clipper mission is to produce high-resolution images of Europa's surface, determine its composition, look for signs of recent or ongoing geological activity, measure the thickness of the moon's ice caps, look for underground lakes, and determine the depth and salinity of Europa's ocean. Our launch window opens on October 10 and the spacecraft will lift off from Kennedy Space Center, Fox said. We are excited and ready to execute the Europa mission as planned, including the basic science plan we had before we discovered the transistor problem. We are now confident that we can complete this mission. If the launch is successful and on schedule, Europa Clipper is expected to reach Jupiter in 2030, with the spacecraft completing its orbital burn after April 11, 2030. During the period between launch and arrival at Jupiter, the spacecraft will perform flybys of Earth and Mars, maneuvers known as gravity assists, which help change the spacecraft's speed and trajectory to reach Jupiter while saving fuel. During Norbert's orbit around Jupiter, the spacecraft will make 45 to 55 flybys of Europa, coming within 25 kilometers of the Moon's smooth, icy surface. What if Europa Clipper could prove the existence of this ocean and provide evidence of life on the Moon? What's next and will NASA and other space agencies study the possibility of landing on Europa in the future? One of the things I worked on in addition to Europa Clipper was the concept of a Europa landing mission, which unfortunately was not selected to proceed with the investigation later this decade. One of the things that came out of that project was this Reconnaissance Research Institute. And as part of that research institute, we wanted to make sure that Europa Clipper collected the right data so that future missions that landed on Europa could use this ground data. One of the things we've done is look in detail at the trajectory that Europa Clipper will follow for each of the nearby flybys. And there are very few that meet our expectations for what we think will be a future landing mission. And there's things like resolution, but also looking at geometry and lighting angles, which are based on our experience landing on places like Mars. So because we're going to be using relative terrain navigation and hazard avoidance and the like, whatever data sets we're going to get from Europa Clipper, that data set will be used to help us choose a landing site for the upcoming landing mission. That's what Phillips, a project scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said. Even though this landing mission isn't going to happen for 20 or 30 years, 
we need to make sure that we have all the data we need. Scientists with more data and images of the icy moons of our solar system than ever before, paving the way for new missions and concepts to further explore the solar system and the search for life. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. You.